Hello, in this video I would like to present you a highly sensitive microphone for detecting infrasound signals. The setup is inspired by work done by Oona Raizanen. Uh, she uploaded a video to YouTube entitled Low Frequency Exploration Microphone. Um, basically it's the same idea, just in a refined version, uh, what I would like to present you in the following. She used a loudspeaker as microphone and combined the loudspeaker with an audio amplifier. Why infrasound is an interesting uh, topic? Well, it's a world beyond, beyond our senses. And there are many technical and natural sources of infrasound. If you think of natural sources, there are weather phenomena, which can be source of infrasound. Um, there you can even detect uh, waves on the ocean far away, thousand kilometers or so, emitting infrasound signals into the atmosphere. You also might be interested into technical sources as traffic, airplanes and the upcoming uh, wind power turbines. There might also be health related issues on this. And there is finally the hum phenomenon which to my knowledge is still unclear what is behind this. There are several associations around in the world dealing with this and well an infra sensitive infrasound detector might also be useful for them. The setup is a reasonably cheap and as I mentioned highly sensitive detector so the total cost of the unit is in the order of 100 units or so. The main components um, you see here two devices one big device which I use for stationary measurements and then other device I use for measurements in the field. Um, the basic sensitive component is the loudspeaker inside. So uh, below this uh, um, membrane here you, you find the loudspeaker. Then you need uh, to amplify the electric signals coming out of the loudspeaker and this is done with an amplifier. In my case it's a home built amplifier because you should expect that a commercial audio amplifier will suppress very low frequencies. It amplifies the signals by a factor of 10 to 20,000. Then we need to generate digital signals and for this purpose I'm using a mini 4-channel signal recorder offered by uh, Wellemann. It costs in the order of 70 euro. It uh, is a 4-channel recorder and uh, then uh, can be connected to the USB uh, connection of a computer. The computer finally we use for the data storage. So let's first have a closer look uh, into the uh, sensor itself, into the loudspeaker unit. Okay, let's start with a look into the sensor itself. Um, basically, the loudspeaker membrane is measuring the pressure difference between the outside world and our reference volume, which is defined by this barrel. This is just uh, a layer of foam, as you would use on a microphone to suppress local turbulences. This is a structure supporting the loudspeaker and this is the loudspeaker 
which is uh, tightly connected to uh, this part and that's our reference volume also with some foam inside it might be the best choice to fill it completely with foam to avoid resonances uh, inside this cavity. We have three cables uh, coming out of this so these two cables are connected to the coil uh, generating uh, the voltage in response to mechanical vibrations and this is the chassis uh, so it's a ground reference. The big unit is exactly the same working principle. Um, it is just a bigger loudspeaker membrane in here. So the small one uses a 6 inch membrane and this is a 10 inch membrane. When taking measurements, uh, please note that wind is a very disturbing thing for infrasound measurements. So this I set up in my garage for measurements. Uh, and if I use the mobile unit, I try to find uh, a depression in the field surrounding by trees or so always try to avoid windy, hilly places. The two loudspeakers have different resonant frequencies. Uh, this is in the range of 50 Hz, this is in the range of 30 Hz. That's uh, a feature resulting from electrical and mechanical uh, features of the unit. But um, in practice, I have not seen any significant peaks or differences between the two units. So on both units, we are essentially working below the resonant frequency in the infrasound range. As you would expect, the larger unit is more sensitive uh, by roughly a factor of four. Uh, otherwise, the spectral response is very similar for both units, uh, down to 0.2 Hz, uh, while below 0.2 Hz, uh, the sensitivity of the bigger membrane remains excellent, while this sensitivity starts to fall off. Uh, the bigger membrane is still nicely sensitive at 0.01 Hz, so that's quite a range across uh, the infrasound spectrum which can be covered with this setup. Next, let us have a look into the amplifier unit. It's pretty uh, simple. So to these sockets uh, the sensor is connected the output is this uh, USB cable. The two batteries form a symmetric power supply plus minus 9 volts. And uh, the circuit itself um, has three components. It has a low pass filter on the input side. It's an uh, RC low pass filter. Uh, using a 150 ohm resistor and a 1000 microfarads uh, condensator. The idea is to reduce the contributions from higher frequencies as we are mainly interested in infrasound. Then we have the amplifier stage. I first tried with a differential amplifier, in principle it would be the cleaner solution, uh, but it turned out that in practice it has little advantage. So now it's a basic um, operational amplifier uh, uh, setup and um, it uses 
a 1 kilo ohm and 10 mega ohm resistors, 10 to 20 mega ohm. So the resulting amplification factor is in the range of 10 to 20,000. You should use a high quality uh, operational amplifier for this purpose. And I'm using LT1028 from Linear Technologies, which is an extremely low noise um, amplifier. You could also use LT1115, which is uh, intended for audio applications and is also very low noise. On the output uh, of the um, amplifier circuit, we have a high pass filter. This is mainly a unprofessional solution to get rid of uh, bias voltages. Um, which usually occur. There are better solutions to get rid of this, but I decided to use a simple high pass filter uh, with 470 kilo ohms and 1000 microfarads condensator. So again, RC, but this time used as a high pass filter. If you calculate uh, the uh, characteristic frequency of this high pass filter is very low. It's in below one millihertz. So actually it does not affect our uh, uh, sensing. Uh, it just gets uh, us rid of um, any voltage offsets. And finally, these four clamps they are the four input channels of the um, IDC. This is the ground uh, and these are the four channels. Okay, I need to mention that uh, using this kind of batteries uh, you can record data for about two days. So I use this for the field unit, for the permanent measurements, I'm using um, bipolar high quality power supply uh, I got from eBay for 20 euros. Um, you have to use a good quality power supply um, as you would like to avoid ripple and to have a 50 or 100 hertz uh, rippling uh, in your uh, electronics. Okay, now let's have a look at the ADC unit. As I mentioned before, the price is in the order of 70 euro. It offers uh, for channels uh, recording and supports sampling rates up to one kilohertz. The ranges are selectable individually for each channel uh, in the range between plus minus 20 volts down to plus minus 04 volts. As sampling frequency I typically use 500 hertz which results in a nucleus frequency of 250 Hertz, well uh, beyond our uh, infrasound range. Unfortunately, the device offers only 10 bits resolution, but the four channels provide a bit of redundancy. So I use uh, one pair of channels at a different amplification factor than the other pair. For example, for the big sensor, I use plus minus eight volt and plus minus two volt. And then with a little code, I combine those signals to reach a resolution of 12 bits. Finally, the pre processed signal then is uh, transferred to um, Audacity, this freeware for handling 
um, audio files and um, I store the final data set as WAV file uh, using Audacity and I also use Audacity uh, to evaluate the measurements. Let us finally have a look into a sound record taken with these devices. This sound record um, is shown with uh, the freeware Audacity. I use this uh, sample data import as flexible option for importing the ASCII files I generate with my output program and then I finally store it as a WAV file. So what you see here is the sound amplitude as function of time, so to speak. But um, because my actual sampling rate is 250 hertz, while Audacity assumes that it is 40 4 kilohertz, there is a factor of 176 to be applied on time scales and frequencies. So actually this record lasts over about 28 hours, more than one complete day. I had the mobile and the stationary unit side by side and you see that the records look pretty similar. Let's now look into the spectrograms. So this is loudness as function of frequency. Note that the frequency scale is also off by a factor of 176. So actually this 3 Hz is 0.02 Hz and this 9000 uh, hertz are around 50 hertz in reality. The main difference between the stationary and the mobile unit, I'm switching here between both records, can be seen at low frequencies below around 30 hertz, which is actually 0.2 hertz. So the low frequency response of the stationary unit is better. Otherwise it looks uh, pretty similar. So uh, what you can see here is a mixture of natural and technical sources. Up here I started the measurement into the night uh, you see mainly traffic. So here only a low number of cars and then in the morning traffic wakes up and all these vertical stripes are transiting cars. The measurement site actually is on the back side of the house and I can detect an approaching car when it is still hundreds of meters away. But these technical sources become pretty quiet below let's say around 1 kilohertz which actually is 6 hertz On the low frequency end, on the other hand, below let's say 30 Hz, you see a variable signal level. So this is below 0.2 Hz actually. And what you see here are pressure variations uh, due to uh, wind. So it becomes loud down here if uh, the wind is very strong and uh, if meteorological processes on 
small scales are generating pressure variations uh, in this low frequency range. In between there is a range which is pretty quiet but occasionally as on this stormy day, so that's another day observed with a stationary unit, um, I can see these stripes at well-defined frequencies. So I guess this is a technical source. It's a typical appearance um, of a wind power generator and there's actually a generator of this kind uh, four kilometers away so it might be the signature of this wind power turbine but I still have to harden this result um, I should try to measure the frequency of the rotation while I'm taking the record unfortunately I cannot see the rotor uh, from my home and you see a lot of additional features in here. For example, these two bands here, which can also be detected with ordinary microphones, which are still sensitive in uh, the range uh, of about 10 hertz. There is some variability in intensity and sometimes also in frequency uh, of these bands. You can also see aircrafts and helicopters passing by. Uh, it's typically up here at higher frequencies um, and you can also detect the Doppler effects while the source is uh, approaching or residing. So I think it's a very interesting um, area which is not so strongly exploited and I will continue my research with uh, both units. Thank you so much.